So today I'm going to talk about the SPFX React calendar web part upgrade to uh, 1.20.0. Uh, and uh, before I start, a little bit about myself. I am Mohammed. Uh, I'm a Microsoft 365 and SharePoint developer. Uh, also, I'm tech lead at Atea Global Services. Um, I'm passionate about contributing to the community and crafting solutions for Microsoft 365. You can connect with me on social platforms uh, listed in the slide, explore my GitHub samples, uh, visit my blog site. And I'm honored to have recently received the Microsoft MVP recognition this month in the technical category of Microsoft 365 development. So um, the agenda for today is going to be about an intro, then um, talking about the React calendar upgrade to SPFX 1.20, uh, then React calendar filter uh, by event category, and some issues that I had to fix uh, after upgrading to uh, 1.20, I mean some packages upgrade, and the upcoming updates that I'm planning to uh, implement to the React calendar uh, for uh, enhancing the web part. Then uh, after that, the uh, fun part, demo and exploring the code, then uh, links and references. Um, refresh Rangers. If you haven't heard about the Refresh Rangers initiative, then it was an initiative to update the most popular and most used SPFX uh, apps to the current latest version of SharePoint framework. And the amazing outcome ends up with updating many, many samples to SPFX 1.20.0. The initiative was in October, uh, the same month of October feast. If you would like to know more and the outcome, uh, I will provide shortly, shortly uh, a link for the initiative outcome in the community site. Uh, one of these uh, samples that uh, was upgraded to um, SharePoint Framework 1.20 is React Calendar Sample. The React Calendar is a web part that allows you to manage events in SharePoint in a modern calendar view. It uses a list of existing events on SharePoint site events list um, the location and name of the list and the dates of um, the events to be displayed are defined in the properties of the web part. The important thing with this web part is it, it checks the user's permissions to view, add, edit, and delete events. Um, this Web part has been created by our awesome colleague. Um, I hope I pronounce their name correctly. Joao Mens, I hope. Uh, the web part has been passed through several updates and changes and upgrades. And in the React web part, I used uh, the SharePoint framework toolkit to upgrade the web part to uh, SPFX 1.20.0. It is awesome, awesome toolkit that helped me achieve that without thinking about, hey, how can I write uh, some comments or CLI uh, command to, uh, to, uh, to upgrade to the latest version. However, uh, the CLI also is great, but um, if you are um, like, um, if you like to do it without writing uh, comments, then go with uh, the SharePoint uh, Framework Toolkit. Uh, I highly recommend trying it if you have if you haven't yet 
uh, tried in your daily uh, SPFX uh, development. And this is how the uh, React calendar web part look like uh, after adding a big change, which is filtering events in the calendar uh, by uh, category. So now you will be able to uh, filter uh, events uh, depending on the selected category, or maybe uh, show all events by selecting all categories. Uh, this um, drop down list or combo box uh, to filter the uh, calendar events, it was uh, developed by leveraging the Flow and UI uh, React combo box. If you are interested in Fluent UI React uh, combo box, then um, also uh, look at uh, the component, the, uh, the category component in the React calendar, because it was uh, a great implementation uh, for uh, combo box in the React calendar. Then, um, after I did the upgrade to uh, SharePoint Framework 1.20, I had some issues and the web part didn't work, not because of the upgrade, but because of some of the packages. And this package, it was XML to JS. And um, I found out that fast XML parser um, fixed the issue for me. So I went with using fast XML parser instead of XML to JS. Um, the upcoming updates to uh, the React calendar web part are two. Um, first, enhancing the events load time because it was uh, a suggestion by uh, many of our colleagues who are using this sample and also uh, configuring the categories uh, by colors. So adding a color for each category instead of um, showing events randomly uh, by random, I mean showing events by random colors. So we will fix that by configure co specific colors for uh, the categories. Now is the fun part, demo and exploring the code. Let's, let's see how it works practically. So um, uh, one of the things that I did, and it is not in the sample, is I liked to have the web part uh, wide, full wide by uh, by full um, page, uh, and I will let you know how can you do that in the uh, web part. It is just one property that you should add to the web part. How it works? So by default, it will the uh, web part will show all your events. But what if you would like to get some specific events? I mean, filter. Um, so by deselect, so I don't have any events, but what if I would like to see meeting events, for example? So I have two events, um, maybe business. Yeah, we have few events, anniversary. We have one more. Yeah, and get together, we have one more. Just before our meeting, I found out that there is a bug with loading events. Uh, when I click on the event to edit the event, uh, I found a bug and I resolved this bug and I submit a BR uh, to the sample. Hopefully, um, uh, Hugo will process that uh, very soon. So please uh, keep an eye on the uh, latest changes on the web part because the, 
this uh, PR has been submitted just today uh, before our demo. So from here, you can uh, edit uh, the events. Um, for some events that uh, are uh, recurrent events, you can uh, edit these recurrence series by click here and edit the um, the recurrence if it's daily, weekly, or as per your uh, preference. This is how it works. I I believe you know that uh, you can also uh, get a weekly view for the events. Um, also, you can navigate uh, by the weeks or maybe months. Uh, also, you can get to the today view by click on today. Um, yeah, these are briefly the main functionality, but uh, the filtering by category was the last uh, change that we did before upgrading the samples, uh, the sample to uh, SharePoint framework uh, 1.20. Let's jump into the code. Uh, I will not deep dive with the code because the web part is huge. It has many components and many controls, but I wanted to highlight uh, three things. One of them is if you would like to have the web part in a uh, full page, then you have to add this uh, property with true and if you do that then you will be able to add the web art uh, with full page but you have to uh, do that uh, in the uh, full width section so you have to add the full width section otherwise you will have the web art in the regular uh, width um, then this is the uh, change that I did before our demo to fix the issue of um, recurrence info. And this change in the BR uh, in uh, our sample, you can check uh, the code there. Then uh, one of the main uh, things that you uh, might be uh, interested in is uh, how the filter of uh, events category works. And on this function, you will see how uh, we did that um, by um, selecting the categories and on selecting categories depending on the user selection and uh, change the state with the current uh, selected categories in order to filter the events. So these are the main highlights that I wanted to share with you today and these are the links here is a sample link and here is the commit um, for upgrading to 1.20 and uh, this is the change uh, that um, i did to uh, filter the events categories and here here also is the link for uh, the refresh ranger uh, initiative and um, and this is all what I have. Uh, feel free to review the sample code in GitHub. I would love to hear from you about any potential updates or enhancements you identify. And if you have question, then just um, add it to the chat and I will answer you. Thank you. Thank you.